Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain. Today, I'm going to be talking about and showing you how to play and reviewing the Royal Game of Ur. I've also heard it called the Ancient Game of Ur. And in the case of this box here, it's just called Ur Game. <laughs> now, it's the reason it's got so many different names is this game is just so old. This is uh, this game is over five thousand years old at least. It comes from the ancient city state of Ur, hence why it is generally referred to as the Royal Game of Ur, the Ancient Game of Ur, the Game of Ur, etc. Now this is the second oldest game that we we kind of know the rules to the oldest being senate which both of which are racing games so this is a abstract strategy racing game that is generally considered to be one of the ancestors of backgammon so let's have a look at what comes in the box when you buy a copy of the royal game of Ur. now here you have the board to the Royal Game of Ur, which is uh, very oddly shaped, especially when compared to other board games. It's it's not a square, it's not a rectangle, it's not a circle, it's... I don't even know what you would call this shape. It's kind of got two different rectangles with a little neck con connecting the two. And then uh, many sets that I've seen, this one included, come with a drawer that has the components in it. Now. Here's a look at the spaces on the board, those florets uh, that you see uh, here and here. And let me see if I can get that right. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, there I am. There. And also there and whoops, there are very important to the game. Now, <laughs> the rest of the pieces of the game are. Uh, the pieces for the white and black player, which look like this, and are attempting to race their way uh, around the board first, and the dice. Now, interesting little uh, factoid here. This is a, a 5,000 year old game, and its dice are not six-sided dice. They are four-sided dice, little, um, little four-sided pyramidal dice and they don't have faces with numbers on them instead some of the points are painted white while others are black and the way it works is you roll the dice and you get to move a piece equal to the number of white pips that are showing so it can be between zero and four for your move now <clears throat> that that's a look at everything that comes with the Royal Game of Ur when you purchase a copy of this. Now, uh, there are two possible ways to play this. There is the original race game and there is a, a rather more complicated abstract strategy game that people have come up with that was not something that was originally used. Basically, people tried to come up with a more modern strategy game based on just using the board and the pieces, but that's not what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about the the a variation on the original game, my, uh, my favorite variation, and as you can expect with a game that's over 5,000 years old, a there are many variations to how you play this game. Now, the reason we actually know how they originally played it is because a uh, I believe it was written in cuneiform. A cuneiform clay tablet was found, which, which actually uh, had the rules, uh, not the not maybe not the original rules because this tablet I think dated back about three thousand years versus the game itself as being five thousand years old, but actually had the rules and how it was commonly played at that time, and uh, that is a rarity when you have. A game that is this old and there was a period of time when it fell out of fashion and was not being played anymore quite often we only know the gist or maybe even nothing at all about how the game was played but because we found this clay tablet in an archaeological excavation we actually know how this game was played so I'm gonna take you to the table I'm gonna show you how this game is played then we're gonna come back 
I'm going to review it, I'm going to rate it, I'm going to tell you how it feels, and as I do with all classic game reviews, I'm going to tell you if it holds up till today, and then we're going to get a second opinion from Glenn. Okay, so here we can see the Royal Game of Ur ready to be played. Now, this particular copy comes with enough of the four-sided dice that each player can have four of them, which is, I've seen some people play with only three, I like it best with four myself. And it also comes with plenty of pieces, so you can play with different numbers of pieces, though I like to play it with seven pieces per side. Now, the goal of the game is to race your pieces around the board, and you have to move them by coming on uh, here and following a path around the board in this direction. You first go down to the, to the end here, then up the middle line all the way to the other end here, and then back around to your side and off the board here. Now, your opponent does the reverse, so the one area that you share of the board with your opponent is that center line. The two, uh, the two side areas for each player are for them alone. Now the florets are a little special. When you land on a floret, you for free get to roll the dice again and possibly move the same or another piece again. In addition, while normally moving, if you land on an enemy's piece, you get to bump them back off the board and they have to start from scratch again. You may not land on an enemy's piece while it is on a floret, which of course there is only one floret that you could do that on and that is the one on the center line over here. If you would land on an enemy's piece because they were there and you got the right roll to land on them, instead you go to the very next available spot there. <clears throat> You cannot land on your own pieces, and if you were, that is not a move then that you can legally make. The object of the game is to get your pieces all the way around the board and off the board. Once they move off the board, you keep them over here in the crook to mark that they had scored, and you do need an exact roll to get them off the board. So, let me show you a few turns and, and give you an idea on how this goes. So, I'm going to start with the black player here. They're going to roll some dice. Now, as you can see here, they rolled three pits. So they're gonna move one of their pieces on, one, two, three, and it is the white player's turn to go. So they're gonna roll, and they rolled zero. Bad luck for the white player. So black goes again, and black is gonna roll, and again, black gets three pips. So now, black cannot move a new piece on because he's already there, so he's gonna move around the crook, one, two, three. So now it is white's turn, and white rolls the dice and gets two pips, so they're going to move on there. Now it is black's turn, and black gets two pips, which is, now here's a, uh, an area where you have a couple of options, and this is where some of the strategy in the game comes in. So you could bring a new piece on, but actually it's a much better move to take black's piece here and move it onto the floret. Because not only does black get a free extra roll, that piece is safe there. And if white comes past them, they have a chance to knock them off the board. Taking this floret and holding it is an incredibly important strategy in the Royal Game of Earth. So, moving along, it, black gets to go again and rolls three pips, so they're gonna go one, two, three. Now it is white's turn, and they rolled three pips, so now they can go one, two, three and come onto the center, or they could bring another piece on, which is what they're going to do. One, two, three. Now there's a couple reasons for this. One, going into the center line would make them vulnerable to Black's piece on the next turn if they rolled the right number, and in addition, now having two pieces on the board here means there are three numbers that they can roll, three numbers that would land them on this floret. If they roll a one, they can move this up and get another roll. If they roll a two, they can move this piece up to the floret and get another roll, and if they roll a four, they can move a piece from off the board onto the floret and get another turn. So that is a case where of why they would very much want to bring a new piece on rather than moving the piece that's already on the board. So now it is Black's turn again, and Black rolls a three. So now they have to move one of their pieces that's on the board. They don't want to give up their safe spot, so they're gonna go one, two, three. So now it is White's turn, and White gets a two, so perfect. 
So they're gonna move this piece up to the floret and get another roll of the dice. And now they're hoping for another two because then they can bump black back off the board. They do get another two. Look at that. I'm gonna make sure you can see those dice there. Two pips. So they're going to take this piece, go one, two, and bump black's piece back off the board. Now it's black's turn. Black is gonna make a roll and get two pips. So they're gonna come right back onto the board. Then white is gonna go and get two pips and they're gonna come and bring another piece onto the board. Black is going to roll and get one pip only. So they're gonna bring another piece onto the board. White is going to roll and get three pips. They now really have to to move one of their pieces, they decide they're gonna try to get past black over here. So they're gonna go one, two, three. Now if black gets a one, they're gonna get knocked all the way back off the board. Let's see what happens. Black got a two. So black is gonna wait there with that piece. Instead, they're gonna move this piece up and get the floret to get another chance to roll a one. Here we go. And they got another two. So what they decide to do with that second two is they're going to bring another new piece onto the board there. So now it is white's turn and white really wants to get that piece moving. So they only roll the one. So they're gonna move this piece up here to hit the floret and get another roll. And they're really hopeful. They want a four so they can get this piece out of the way. But they only roll the one again. So they're gonna take it and they're gonna move off. So now this gives Black another chance to get that two and possibly knock that piece off the board, but they don't, they get a three. So they're gonna take this piece from here and go one, two, three to increase their chances for knocking that piece off the board in the future, plus freeing up the floret over there for future use. Now White only needs a three or more and they don't get it, but they get a two. So they're gonna pull all the way to the end there and black needs a four if they want to catch the white before they get away. Otherwise, they're going to be chasing. Let's see how it goes. They don't get it, but they do get a two, which again allows them to get another chance at it by hitting that floret. So they roll again, and they got a one, which is not what they were hoping for at all, but they're going to move this piece up here. So now it is white's turn and white needs a three to get fully off the board or a one or a two to move off the center line and be no longer vulnerable. They got a two. They can move off the center line, hit their floret and get another roll. A one would take that piece off the board, anything else, and they can come chasing black over here. They got something else. They got a two and they're going to move up into the center line there. So now this is how the game goes. Now to get this piece off the board, because it is only one space from coming off the board, white needs to roll a one. However, where it is, it is totally safe. Black can no longer knock it off the board. So white can leave it there for a while while they, they play with their other pieces here that they're attempting to get up there also. But they do need to get it out of the way to get the rest of their other pieces off the board. Black also, unfortunately, had to give up their nice floret space here in the middle of the board. And they had to do that because of just the situation that was going on on the board. But they do have a chance to get back on it with this piece here if they can beat white to it. They're going to keep racing around the board, knocking each other's pieces off until one of them gets all of their pieces through the whole board and placed in the crook on their side. And that is how a game of the Royal Game of Ur is played. So now we're going to head back over to the table. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to tell you how it feels. I'm going to tell you if this as a classic game stands up to today. I'm going to review it. I'm going to rate it. And we're going to get a second opinion from Lynn. Welcome back. So that was how you play a game of the Royal Game of Ur. Now, this is a very old school game. It is a standard roll and move racing game. Uh, the, the most interesting thing is the board. It's very different from other classic roll and move games. This this bizarre shape, the fact that you only share uh, the center line area with the with your opponent and the, the side areas are for you alone or him alone. And it makes it a very different feel than a lot of the other roll and move 
uh, racing games that came after this, such as Backgammon or Parcheesi. Uh, so, generally speaking, I'm not usually a fan of roll and move mechanic or a fan of racing games either. I mainly wanted to try this game because of its historical significance in gaming. The fact that it is up there is one of the oldest board games that we still know of and one and a member of the oldest family of games that is still around. That being said, this game is fun. It's simple fun, but it's fun. And there's a, there's an elegance to the simplicity of this that makes me like this game significantly more than some of its successors. I'm not a fan of backgammon. I hate Parcheesi with a passion. But I like this game. I like the Royal Game of Earth. Yes, they added more things into games like backgammon and Parcheesi, but I, they, I didn't like any of the things that got added to them. The Royal Game of Ur is is simple and fun. The, the quick decisions that you have to make about whether to, to take a move based on your die roll that might bring a new piece on the board or give you a free extra move or bounce one of your opponent's pieces off the board or maybe score one of your own pieces the, the it, that is where all the strategy lies and how you're going to spend your movement points what do you want to do do you want to get that piece off the center so it's safe do you want to uh jump on a floret and get another roll but if you jump on that floret you may not be able to jump on your opponent's piece that's over here that right now you have enough pips to jump on and knock it off the board. Are you going to play more defensively, more offensively? And it's up to you. And in that regard, I do find this to be a very enjoyable, quick two-player game. This game plays in only about 15 minutes. It's very fast. It's specifically for two players. And in that regard, I think it's it does hold up till today, even though it's a roll-and-move game. But you're not... The, the roll-and-move aspect of the game, it doesn't feel as random as when a roll and move is say, roll a six-sided die and see how far you move. Because of how each of the dice literally only has two sides, it's either one or zero, and there's four dice, on average, most often, you're rolling a two. On rare occasions, you get a three or a four, or a one and a zero, but most often, you get twos. Uh, next most often is threes and ones, and then fours and zeros. So you can mitigate that because you know if you're plopping yourself two spaces behind something, you're very likely to roll that two and be able to say, hit the floret or hit a opponent's piece. You're playing the odds. And, and playing the odds with four basically D2s, they're basically four two-sided dice, you can play the you you can understand the odds and play them a lot better than playing it with one d6 for a roll and move or even two d6 for a roll and move. So yes, I do like this game. I will play this game anytime someone asks. And out of ten stars, I give the Royal Game of Ur seven out of ten stars. It's not my favorite game of all time, but I do like it. I do enjoy it, and I'm definitely going to play this game many more times in the years to come. And this game has a permanent place in my collection. Now, that being said, let's get a second opinion from Lynn. Lynn, how many stars out of 10 would you give to the Royal Game of Ur? Five. So now, Lynn obviously didn't like it as much as I did, and she maybe doesn't think it holds up to today. With a five, five is a pretty uh, low score. I mean, that, that's rather mediocre. Basically, five says, meh, didn't really like it, don't really hate it, I just don't really know what to think about it, it's right there in the middle. So Lynn doesn't like the Royal Game of Her as much as I do, she doesn't enjoy the the roll and move mechanic and thinks that it's maybe a bit too simplistic but there you have it i mean different people have different opinions and not every game is for every person and even with me i gave it a like but not a love i gave it a seven seven stars out of ten so there you have it it's a thumb up from me uh maybe uh no thumb in either direction from lynn right there in the middle of the road uh so there you have it have you played the royal game of ur uh, do you disagree with us? Do you agree with one of us and not the other? Feel free to comment down below and let us know how much you enjoy the Royal Game of Earth. Uh, what is your favorite classic ancient uh, 
strategy game that's still played today. Go ahead and put it in the comments down below. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, either on this video or on the Royal Game of Ur, feel free to comment down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see me do more like it, give us a like, share this video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the board game Captain, that's Captain spelt with a K, on YouTube. And until next time, game on.